Hi everyone, my name is Daryl. So I recently had the opportunity to interview Jack McGee, owner of Jack's Transmissions. He's been rebuilding GTR transmissions since 2014, and he's literally rebuilt thousands of them. Jack not only works on GTRs, he actually owns a full bolt-on 2013 GTR, and he uses it to test every rebuilt transmission that leaves his shop. One of the topics Jack discussed was how tuners can improve their tuning specifically for the GR6 transmission. In this first segment, Jack talks about launch control and how tuners can change the launch control strategy to accommodate the increased horsepower and torque. Jack talks about his secret sauce for making sure that you can lose launch control as much as you want without ever being fearful of breaking anything. So, Let's go ahead and watch this. It's really fascinating. Yeah. So when it comes to launch control, uh, tuning is, um, it, it could be, a, a, I wouldn't say life-changing, but it could be a, a really positive change uh, to the life expectancy of a trans if you want to launch it a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it, it really, you know, like I said, keeping it below 4,000 RPM on the launch control and putting more load on the engine uh, and you, you can feel a difference. Like I, I've had people in the past come in where they had their car at launch control at 5,000 RPM. We're like, what are you doing? And, you know, they keep breaking axles and shafts. And, you know, when, when you load the engine, basically what you're doing is, even though the engine is sitting in there and just in neutral, just free revving, okay. what you're doing is, is you're making changes to timing, like, you know, uh, okay. you know uh, what they call retarding the timing. You know, you, you're, you're retarding the timing a bunch and what that does is, is it simulates, it puts the engine under load, like as if the car is in gear and the engine is under load on the road. So what you want to do is you want to build boosts and have the engine loaded as if it's, you know, under resistance. So it's ready to go because if the engine is just sitting there and the turbos are not spooled up and you have the clutches engaged on the launch control, you're just, the car is just going to slam the clutch. Yeah. And you're just going to sit there. It's just going to die. You're going to bog off the line. So you're actually so, re you're actually retarding the timing. Is that what? Yes. You yeah. You have to do it significantly to increase the load. And what's really nice is like you know, tuning platforms like you know like Ecutech is really amazing. You can actually modulate uh, the boost. You know, control the boost pressure. So you retard the timing so it builds load. Boost pressure goes up, but you can limit it. Like if you want it at like ten pounds of boost and have it like hold it there. It's a little tricky, uh, you know, you have to be, you know, pretty good tuner to do it, but you know, in order for it to be consistent and hold at that spot and you know, the engine is you know, like under that load and ready to go. Basically when the clutch is engaged, the engine is not going to bog. It doesn't have to build boost or anything. It's, it's ready. Like it, mm -hmm. once the clutch is engaged, you're gone, you know, mm -hmm. it, it will take off. <laughs> so, so yeah, so so load is the key to launch control. Uh, the more load you have and the less RPM you have, especially if you're running a factory first gear or street tires or whatever, that'll give you just a, an amazing launch um, that, that's still a lot of fun. It's not gonna take a lot away. And um, you know, the car will live, you know, you're not gonna break anything. Yeah. So, um, cool. so, and then, and, you know, Another problem that you'll probably find. So that was really amazing stuff by Jack and sort of opposite of what you would really think in regards to launch control. In this next segment, Jack talks about clutch crossover and why tuners need to consider modifying the default torque table to ensure smooth gear shifts rather than harsh engagement of the clutch. So getting back to um, the clutch operation. So when you engage, you go from third gear to fourth gear what it does is it's, it's already shifted there. It already has a pre-selected. When you hit that paddle and it shows that number three to number four, it's not shifting to that gear. It's already got that gear selected. What's happening is, is the clutch that's engaged in third gear will let go, and then the clutch for the even gears will engage. And that's called a crossover. So when you cross over from one clutch to another, it should be almost seamless. You should feel a little bit, but it shouldn't be harsh. Right. If on a lot of tunes, 
a, a lot of tuners out there do not like to spend the time to make clutch crossover smooth and um, how should I put it uh, and, and non-aggressive. Um, so if you're test driving a vehicle or if you're driving a vehicle now, and when you go shift from one gear to another, if you feel the car, if you feel that shock, it's always the shock that kills everything. If you feel the car jerk, you know, you go to engage the gear, it goes, boom, and you shift to the next gear, boom, it does that. These wet clutches and these cars, I don't care how many plates it is, how aggressive it is, it does not need to do that. The technology is there in software, especially Ecutech is very good at it. You could change things called torque tables to give you a nice smooth crossover engagement without that shock, that judder you get when you shift. We get so many cars that come in that have that issue and it's hard on everything. Yeah. You know, even when you're driving normally, if it's jerking every time, you know, it makes the shift, every time it crosses over, you're putting pressure on gear teeth, shafts, you know, the, the clutch basket assembly, the, the drive axles, everything, you know, all that stuff feels that hit on the engagement. And even on wide open throttle, full throttle applications with a lot of like, especially the high power tunes, they have it engaged so harshly that you, like when it engages the next gear, you feel the car spin a little bit. Like your yeah. first gear, it hits second, it's like, and then you go into third, it goes, like it does again. It shouldn't be breaking the tires loose on the ship. That means it's way too harsh. Yeah. So another piece of advice I have, if you want longevity out of a GR6, is you need, you absolutely must have smooth crossover engagement and tuners hate me over this they do not want me to say this but in order to do that the tuner needs to be sitting in the passenger seat and they need to go through the clutch torque tables to and, and feel the car in order to do that you can't there are some tuners that have tunes saved where they can do it remotely you know a, a, a remote tune where it's really close and it's going to give you the best of both worlds. But without the person tuning the car in the passenger seat, feeling the jerkiness of the clutches, how aggressive it's it's engaging, you can't see it in a log or anything. Yeah. Well, if it's really bad, I take that back. If it's really bad, you could see that judder in a log. You can see it in a table. It's like, it, it, but it has to be like damagingly bad. Um, it, if they that... tune it right, if they spend the time on it and tune it right, and that crossover is smooth and a wide open throttle on the shift, the engagement is not overly harsh. It's a nice positive engagement, but not enough to like shock the car or break the tires loose on the, on the next gear and everything. Aftermarket gears, factory gears, aftermarket baskets, factory baskets, all that stuff will live a lot longer and you will not break stuff as often if you have that smooth engagement. Is that something they have to do in the, um, <clears throat> just in the ECU software, or do they actually have to go into the TCM software to, um, to change that table and to get that? Unfortunately, torque, right? yeah, it's really annoying. Basically the, the clutch uh, torque or clamping um, is controlled via the torque on the engine side. Okay. So the engine sends a signal to the trans, hey, I want this much clamping pressure at the clutch. You know, and then the clutch, the clutch just follows what it's instructed to do. Hmm. So, you know, if it's engaging really harshly and everything, it's doing that because it's getting a signal from the, the engine side to do that. Hmm. Um, so unfortunately, it's the engine side because honestly, like I would happily just send out transmission tunes to anybody and everybody out there that needs it for smoother clutch crossover engagement if it was just in a TCM. Hmm. But since it's in ECM, it creates a whole, it's just a whole can of worms with with tuners where they do not want to change that stuff. They're adamant that they want it to shift hard, um, you know, and it's just, it's just the way it is, you know. Uh, there's a lot of tuners out there that do spend the time on that. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of good people that do, they, they spend the extra time, get that right, make sure it's, it's, it's a nice soft engagement so you're not breaking because it's a i think it's a disservice to the customer if you're running a factory torque table on an ex, 
you know, an aggressive clutch and it's slamming all the gears like that. It's, yeah. it's not, it's, it's not, it's not good for the whole system and the car is not going to live. That way. So, it, so it's one of those things where, you know, if they're, if they're just tuning the car and, but they're not modifying the factory clutch torque table that they end up making, potentially making, making the, putting the transmission at risk. Yes, yeah, so because the clutch is more aggressive, it's going to grip, you know, there's a lot more friction surface area, so it's going to grip a lot harder. And so that, if you have the factory torque table and the factory pressures are going to it, it's it's going it's going to put a lot more strain on the system. Yeah, and that's okay. So, if that that's okay with the stock tune, but as soon as you put a lot more horsepower and torque, then you're then you cause then you're in trouble. Yeah, and what's really tricky about big clutches is you need to lower the pressures to the clutch uh, and lower the torque table at low RPM and normal driving conditions, and then when you start to get up to like middle of the road on load, you know, on, on, on throttle and everything. You need to increase it a little bit more. Maybe you get closer to that factory range. And then when you go full throttle, you want it to go up even higher than that. Hmm. Uh, the clutches we build, we, we use seals that we that we designed and built to, to run as much pressure as you want. So we tell people, look, don't be afraid to run high pressures at high load, but you know, you really need to change the torque table. Because I think a fear a lot of tuners have, and I don't think they, they fully understand this, is a wet clutch system. A wet clutch means it, it's a clutch that's in oil. You know, it's it, it, it gets cooled by the oil. You know, it, it's, it's lubricated by it and everything. It's not like a dry clutch in a manual transmission car where if you slip the clutch a little bit, you're burning it. Um, and these GR6s, the GR6s actually have safeties in place that work really well, where at low load, low RPM, where you want it to shift smoothly, if you have it shift too smoothly, it actually pulls the throttle back. If you, if you have it too far in one direction, you're not going to burn the clutch up. The system is way too sensitive for that. So if you go too far, you go too soft on the clutch crossover, again, car loves to talk to you. It, it'll tell you. Like it, you'll go from like, let's say, if you're at a certain throttle range, like let's say 15% throttle, you're just accelerating leisurely. And you go from second to third gear. If it's slipping too much, the car will go... Normally it'll go like that. It'll go, you hear it slip a little bit and then the car will actually pull the power back. It'll go and like you'll feel the car like like you let off the throttle and then re-engage if you have too much slip. So there's really very little to no risk on having too much slip at low RPM and low load conditions. And even, I would almost say even like middle of the road, uh, you know, power as well, uh, where you're like maybe 30, 40% throttle. Um, you know, the, the systems in place on that car, as long as you have the safeties in place, it will shut itself down before the clutch has any idea that anything is going on. It, it will not harm it in any way. So what we'll sometimes do is, uh, we don't really do tunes anymore, but back when we used to, if we're tuning somebody remotely, we would, we would look at the logs to see what it's doing if it's shifting too harshly, and then we'll we'll roll it way back. And if the customer complains, hey, it's like it feels like it limps for a split second on the shift, we'll turn it up a little bit, and you can actually see the slip in the logs too. Like it, we'll watch it. If we see too much slip, you know, with experience, you'll know. Okay, we need to increase it. You know, the the torque table by this much here in order to to decrease the slip here. But that's a lot of work. You know, that takes a lot of time. That's yeah. That's basically like tuning the engine all over again just for the transmission. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't like to do that. So you got to be really careful where if if you're currently driving a, a GTR now that you own, uh, or if you're looking to buy one, that crossover, how harsh that feels will give you a pretty good idea um, if things are under a lot of stress or not. Hmm. So I hope that makes I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to I'm trying because... to explain this accurately as I can. So. so that's it for the interview. If this is your first time watching one of my interviews with Jack, I'll have a link to the first one where Jack talks about how to inspect a GTR before purchasing it. In addition, I'll have the full unedited version of the interview because I had to cut down a lot of what Jack had to say and 
It's really fascinating, so I hope you also take a look at that. Please join me in thanking Jack for taking the time to do the interviews. I learned so much, and I'm hoping other GTR owners also gained a little bit of knowledge from watching these interviews. For my next video, I'll be interviewing Sam Barrows, who is one of the top tuners in the country. I'll be asking him what he thinks of Jack's advice for tuners, and it's going to be really fascinating to hear what he has to say. Sam has also graciously agreed to do another video where he's going to give a behind the scenes curtain at what it takes to tune a GTR, the tools that he uses, the process that he does, and that should be absolutely just fascinating. As always, if you got some value from this video, please like it. I'd really like to see this video get out to more folks, and by liking it, you really help that happen. Also, consider subscribing to the channel. I've got so much more content coming up, including that interview with Sam Barros that you really don't want to miss. And I hope to see you again in the next one very soon. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago